iPhone 11 has been out for a little bit over a year and in today's video we are going to review the Apple iPhone 11 after complete one year of usage. Well the iPhone 12 already brought a price drop in the iPhone 11 and hence people are interested in getting it. So with that being said, your voice is very unsure and now without wasting any more time, let's enter the video. So now starting with the build quality and design as always, it's a great premium looking device with a glass back body and 6.1 inch LCD display in the front. We are not going much with the specifications this time as we are going to talk about the overall experience more in this video. A thing which is perfect in iPhone 11 is about its size. It's pretty adequate in terms of size. Not too big, not too small and it is pretty handy for one hand usage too. The overall display is not that great in terms of pixels, but still it won't disappoint you. A thing which I personally didn't like about iPhone 11 is the screen refresh rate of 60Hz. Like if you're having any smartphone of 90Hz and 120Hz display and if you are using it and if you are switching to iPhone 11, you are gonna notice some lags and frame drops in the app's animation. The same happened with me while I switched to iPhone 11 from OnePlus 8 which is a 90Hz device. So it won't be a problem for those who are still using 60Hz devices. But if you are using any devices with 90Hz and 120Hz display, it's gonna be very boring in the initial few days of your iPhone 11 usage. Now coming to the overall performance or something, that's not gonna be feel like outdated even in the upcoming two years of iPhone 11. The Apple A13 Bionic chipset packed with 4 gigs of RAM performs seamlessly good and you won't be disappointed with the performance of iPhone 11 for sure. Well on the papers, the Apple A13 scores higher than the Snapdragon 865. I've been using this phone from an ear and I personally like the performance of this phone a lot. Like I'm a heavy user who works on multiple apps simultaneously and I won't even notice apps slowing down or anything. But on continuous gaming, for hours with heavy games basically, you will notice that your iPhone 11 is getting heated. And the same happens if you are plugging, if you are charging your iPhone from a 18 watt fast charger. You will notice that your iPhone 11 is getting heated a bit. Coming to the camera of iPhone 11 is still a top in class and it's better than some flagships launched this year. In the latest DxO Mark camera result, the iPhone 11 camera got 119 overall points, which is higher than OnePlus 8 Pro and Samsung Galaxy S20 Plus camera. We see dual 12 megapixel ultra wide and wide cameras with aperture of f2.4 and f1.8 in iPhone 11, and you get 2 in 2 optical zoom out and 5 times digital zoom in. The hardware and the software both processes the photo in a very decent way in iPhone 11 and hence we see very great results. Video recording is also pretty amazing in iPhone 11 as you can shoot 4K videos up to 60 frames per second. And the group selfie mode on the front camera is also a great feature which can help you take wider selfies. The iPhone 11 battery is of 3110 mAh which is higher than the latest iPhone 12 and according to my usage I need to charge my phone twice a day with my screen time is something around 10 hours on an average with heavy usage. Now twice a day is not like full charging it twice, it's like 80% around charge in the morning and again charging it back to 80% by the evening and by the end of the day it lasts around 25 to 30% of battery. For users with mild usage, it can last a day with one full charge of morning and also it charges from 0-50% to 50 in 30 minutes with a 20W fast adapter. But you should know that the iPhone 11 comes with a normal 5W charger within the box, so for fast charging it, you will need to buy a fast charger for it. So a 18W fast charger will be adequate for charging your iPhone 11. Also, iPhone 11 is water and dust resistant and it's been rated IP68 which can last up to 30 minutes with depth up to 2 meters into water. Apart from this, unlike previous iPhones, you also get dual SIM support in iPhone 11 in which one SIM is paired electronically and one SIM is paired physically. So overall, if you are planning to get an iPhone 11, then you can go with it as it is lacking nowhere with the latest smartphone features. And overall, it is a great device to use. Also, iOS 14 has enhanced the overall experience of iPhones to next level. So features like back tap and widgets are pretty interesting too. So if you have an iPhone 12 in one hand and iPhone 11 in another, you won't find much difference. So if your budget allows for 12, then you should obviously go with it. But still, iPhone 11 is not much far away being one year elder than the latest iPhone 12. 
So I hope your confusion for getting an iPhone 11 in 2020 or maybe in 2021 is cleared after this video. And also the best thing is that I am using iPhone 11 2 as my primary driver these days. So if you're having any question in your mind regarding this video, then please put a comment below in the comment section. And if you have liked this video, then drop a like, subscribe to the channel. And with that being said, I am Devyan Sharon and I will catch you in the next one. When I close my eyes, I see your face A memory that doesn't fade away I wish I could remove 